What's up, guys? Gabe Base Phoenix here. Welcome back to the stream. Uh, we're doing something a little different today. We're doing a open mic night. I'm kind of part of the Twitch writing community, so Mez was cool enough to put together this open mic night. This is the second session, but I couldn't make it to the first session because I was. Well, you know, I was probably still asleep. I was, yeah, I was definitely still asleep. But, um, I'm going to read an excerpt from my first novel, Senate Awakening. Um, it's a kind of, just to give a little bit of backstory to it, it's, it's kind of graphic. The whole novel is kind of graphic. It's like action oriented but kind of really violent it can be really violent um this one scene is between one of the main villains of at least the first book and somebody who sold him some bad serum product so the book itself is about um it's about a serum that's released in a fictional city called Haven City. The serum is released to the public, and anybody that has enough money to buy the serum, they have to sign a waiver of, at first, uh, first, of course, but whoever has enough money to buy the serum has the possibility of achieving superpowers. Um, and not everybody makes it. That's part of the risk. That's why the waiver exists in the first place and all that. Um, and the guy that's not the villain, Ake, that's the name of the villain in this scene, and the other guy's name is Scumbag Skeeter, it's kind of meant to be like a dark kind of comedic scene, um, but he was selling uh, fake versions of the serum, so you know there's like knockoff copies or knockoff versions of it. Um, so yeah, I kind of just want to jump into it. Um, I'm going to be doing my best at a really bad southern accent for Scumbag Skeeter. And then Ake, he's a psychopath, so I'm going to be tapping into my inner psychopath for that. We, we, let, let's not get into that. Okay, so let's start. The subway is one of many ways the citizens of Haven City get around. They're normally on time and reliable. There are a handful of stations, however, that were in the process of construction, but ceased due to funding being pulled for other city projects, mainly for Uptown Haven. The trains rolled through these stations as the tracks were already built, but they didn't make stops at these abandoned stations. These abandoned stations became homes for homeless citizens and people who wanted to stay under the radar, away from the public eye. This particular station that normally housed both homeless and the men who worked under a man named Skeeter has been a dark, glossy red. If one were to step into the dimly lit station, the first and only smell that would come into contact with one's nose would be a metallic smell, blood. Along the walls, the floor, uh, all along the walls, the floors, ceilings, and tracks. The bodies that the blood belonged to have been piled into a poorly lit corner of the station. A light shone down on the pile, occasionally flickering and bringing the light into a, bringing light to a dark picture. Some of those people were innocent, a man shouts, his voice trembling at the sight of the bloodthirsty killer towering over him. You didn't have to kill him. Oh, but I did, the killer says. Up until this point, the man known as Skeeter had not seen the killer's face clearly. But as Skeeter crawled back and away from the murdering psychopath, a light flickered above him and gave light to a dark person, Ake. The man responsible for putting Lux's mother in the hospital, and now Sentry. Lux and Sentry are both heroes from this story. H Hector, why are you doing this, brother? Skeeter asked, hoping to try and appeal to Ake's humanity. Little did he know, Ake has none. You don't have to do this. You know, something told me not to trust a man with scumbag in his name, scumbag Skeeter. Ake says, 
flashing his pearly teeth. He fiddles with his combat knife in his left hand, flipping it repeatedly, catching it by the tip of the blade each time. Scumbag Skeeter's back connects with a white tiled wall. His heart rate increases, and he's having trouble keeping track of his breathing. Skeeter's heart skips a beat as Ake stamps his right foot next to Skeeter's head on the wall. Your serum didn't kill as you promised. Though, it did cause the friend's powers to go haywire. The idiot injured his girlfriend. Lucky me. So, so but why are you so unhappy, brother? Stop calling me that, Ake says, catching his knife by the handle this time and raising it to Skeeter's eye. I'm half Cuban, you country white boy. Skeeter takes a huge gulp, sweat drips from his nose as he breathes loudly from his mouth. And to answer your question, your serum did not work, as I said, it continues. The friend would have been dead if it would have worked as intended. I managed to get the friend just once with the shot, but your shitty serum didn't work, scumbag. Well, why do you keep calling him friend? Shouldn't you at least in the know the names of the folks you're going after skeeter asked trying to buy himself some time though no one was going no one was coming to rescue him my main focus is fucking with jay ache states ever since that unfortunate day i mugged his mother our destinies have been intertwined maybe even before that i already knew him from his fri frightening reputation oh sorry i already knew him from his fighting reputation and there's no way he didn't know me I'm called the local psychopath. He had to have known about me, right? R R shut up! Ake shouts before stabbing Skeeter in his right shoulder. Skeeter shouts in pain and reaches for his wound, but Ake removes the knife, then stabs it through Skeeter's left hand and his shoulder again. He twists the knife, then pulls it out, letting blood spurt onto his pants. Skeeter shouts in pain again. Ake's eyes constrict uh, to where one can no longer tell the color of them. You want to know the secret to my powers, Skeeter the scumbag. Every time I injure or harm someone, every fiber of my being strengthens exponentially. The entire fucking Haven City police force could show up right now and you'd still be fucked. <laughs> so would they. Skeeter cries, and salty tears mixing with the oil and sweat coming from his pale face. Oh, yeah. Ake leans in uh, close to Skeeter. So close, in fact, that it's like Ake is stealing Skeeter's oxygen from him. Now, before I end your suffering that I'm actually quite enjoying, do you have any last words or regret regrets that you'd like to tell your audience? Of one before croaking. Eight questions. Skeeter exhales a shaky breath before speaking. I just want to say that I'm... S Ake stabs through Skeeter's eyes so deep that it penetrates the wall behind his head and making a sharp tink sound. And we're out of time. Sorry, brother. Ake says in a mocking tone. He steps on Skeeter's forehead and pulls the knife free before wiping it off on his pants. Now, I need another way I can get to Lux. I'd love to take advantage of this enormous power boost while I have it. Just then, a train blows by behind him, rattling the tracks and clanking, and the clanking echoing... Wait, the clanking sound echoing through the once again abandoned station as Ake looks at the cars and smiles wickedly. Alright. That's it. That's all I got. That's it. Alright. All right. I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I'm taking it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, you if I push, push to talk. Yes. <laughs> well done. Good piece. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to continue with my screen stream, but thank you guys uh, for being here so I could share this. Cheers. <laughs> thank you. Alright, chat with you guys later. Just trying to want a better turn out this round. <laughs> uh, that's no problem. Uh, chat with you guys later. Alright guys. Uh, let me know what you thought. That's from the first book. That's from the first book. Shout out to... Uh, I'm, I'm going to open it back up again. Shout out to Mez and Michelle for showing up. Um, they're part of the, the Twitch writing network. Part of the... The... 
thing. I didn't know this was a thing before I started writing on Twitch. But then I think it was either Mez or Axaboost that sent me the invite. And I was like, oh, there are so many people. If we look on the right here. There's so many people on Twitch that write. It's amazing. And I'm part of this community. And they were like, hey, we got an open mic night. I've never done one of those. So, you know, we gave it a shot. So let me know what you guys thought of the, the excerpt. Um, it's a scene from like towards the, the, um, like, where is it? Like just past the middle half of the book. You might not know everything that Ake is talking about. Who the hell is Lux? Who the hell is Sentry? Those are the to two heroes he mentioned by name. Uh, Lux is the main character. Sentry is the girlfriend of the Lux's friend that Acre is referring to. He doesn't refer to anybody as their name pretty much besides Lux. Um, but, uh, yeah. That was kind of like, it's one of my favorite scenes from the first book. Um, and I apologize for stumbling on my words. I wrote the book. I should be able to understand what I wrote. Um, but it's one of my more favorite scenes from the first book because it's kind of, it's a bit out of place. Like, it's got a bit of a spooky thriller slash horrific vibe. I'm not going to say horror, but horrific vibe to it. Um, because, you know, there's a pile of bodies in the corner and Ake is pretty much interrogating uh, this dude that gave him a bad serum. But, uh... Yeah, Ake had already made up his mind when he, excuse me, when he reached uh, Scumbag. So, um, yeah, that's just some of the stuff you're missing out on if you haven't already purchased Send It Awakening. Speaking of, let's go ahead and go on over to the, the damn uh, thing. The plugs. What is the Send It Awakening? This is my first book. This is my first book. Paperback is only twenty dollars. Kindle Unlimited free dollar nine minus nine nine. Kindle Digital ten dollars. Um, make sure you give a rating and review. Shout out like these little people down here. Oh, there. Um, it's the first book. That's one of the many interesting scenes. That scene actually before I before I went back and edited it before I sent it to an editor, a professional editor, that scene was not in the original book. I added that scene and a couple other scenes and the origins to the first book as well, um, which is kind of what made it as thick it is, as it is. Um, but if you want to read the first five chapters, that scene is not included in the first five chapters, unfortunately. But if you want to read the first five chapters, that's available on Wattpad.com and Scribblehub.com. Uh, and if you want to support, consider subscribing on YouTube or subscribing on Twitch. Or we get benefits because we still don't have emotes for the Twitch channel. Um, benefits for, through, through Patreon. We got tears and tears. Um, yeah. Is that all the plugs? Oh, the donation link, that's, got to use the command donate thing, and then that's there, and then, if, if you want, you don't have to cash out in the thing, if that's easier, it's just there, just for convenience sake. Um, but other than that, let's get into some writing stuff. Oh, wait, I haven't, uh, you can close this up. I didn't turn on the AC. That's what's normally going on in the background, and that's why I just realized why I'm sweating. I turned it off just for that that performance, but um, I'm hot. Yeah. All right. Welcome to stream, moms, and this show. Great, didn't know there was a Twitch Radio Network. So cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, welcome to the stream, guys. Uh, so, 
I want to continue with, excuse me, world building. The uh, and we're not gonna go very long. We're gonna go we're only then live 50, so it's only gonna be 45 minutes. I'm gonna leave at nine still, um, because I know other people got lives and stuff or something. Uh, so let's go to. Look at, let's look at what we got here. Chains called, well, we named the chains. Fix that here. Tau. Coins. Kinetic. Ferrokinesis. Oh, I'm going to change the name up here. Ferris. Ferris. Uh, let's see. What else do we have to work on? Oh, I know what I was going to work on. Oh, we're going to go to the, the new, new document. And I wanted to do some character stuff. Work on some character things. Still don't have a weapon for the main character. Uh, I said yesterday, I only have five really creative weapons that I've given assigned to the characters at this point. Uh, Ferris has changed, Pidal's bat, uh, Roka's light shield hat. Uh, Axis is right, lightning rods, and then, oh god. Oh, appreciate the bits cheer, mom, that cheer was for the reading, appreciate it. All the all the bits are appreciated. Oh, I didn't. The stream thing was muted. You guys probably didn't hear the sound, but it went bling. That's that's what it sounded like. No exaggeration. Yeah, there it is. Appreciate the bitch cheer. For sure. Oh, you just one up moms like that. Okay. Oh, I got it. I got it. I get it. So, shockwave generation. What are... Okay, we can go down the list of stuff I already have for the main character. Because I really want to get him done. Once I know he's complete, I'm pretty satisfied. Um, zero... Getting to his name, semiotics. That's like tags that can be given. That's what I'm understanding what they are. They're like tags that can be given to a character. Things associated with that person. Iconography. That's like the colors, and each of the colors represent represent something different. Um, well, you already know about alignments. Chaotic good. Uh, I don't think he's going to be chaotic good anymore. He might be neutral good. Because he's going to be the naive... Well, you're going to... I'll just read all the personality traits. He's loyal, confident, courageous, compassionate. Joyous, upbeat, positive, and naive. So that's not the traits of a chaotic good person, but more of a neutral good person. He's just a good guy all around. Not the brightest of the bunch, but... There we go. Student affiliation. I still haven't named the teams, but that's where the affiliation thing would go. Um, and also maybe the main town. We'll put this in brackets. Team name. Uh, main town. Region. Uh, so what is? What else does he have? What else? What else? What else? Shockwave generation. Gold virtue color. Actually, that's not the case anymore. We didn't we didn't give color of the virtue in uh, classes anymore. We got rid of that. Gives the illusion of super strength and super speed since he can transmute the air and vacuum around any part of his body, mainly his fists, palms, and feet. Right. I forgot about that. Shockwave facts. Uh, I've already read all full nose before, and he's gonna have super moves and just normal moves. He'll be known for using. Everybody in this series will at some point, and just take some time to name it. 
the easiest thing for me to name out of everything I create are always the characters. Um, yeah. Shockwave. Uh, I could see a crossbow, but I don't want him to have a ranged weapon. I'm going to look at the list of weapons I have already, or tools. See if I can pull anything from that for shockwaves. I could see... I, I said crossbow because I could see him, like, pulling back on the, the drawstring and loading it up. And then, like, instead of firing it off, like, pulling a trigger or something, he, like, pulls the trigger and, like, in that split second it's being released puts a wave, a shockwave behind it, like a mini shockwave behind it or something, and it sends the arrow out faster or something like that. But I want, I said before, I want the we the weapons to be creative as well. Um, so. Yeah. I'm still thinking of something to do with uh, Kiahi's knuckles knuckle dusters um I was thinking they have some sort of element to each of them like say the ones on Kayahi's right hands his right hand the, the knuckle dusters on his right hand say those like if he presses a button or holds a button on those it'll generate fire from the tips or something so he can manipulate that fire I completely forgot like, I'm, I'm just imagining him doing stuff with fire and ice all the time, but he's conjuring that in my imagination. So, instead of... He doesn't... That conjuring the element for kinetics takes way more virtue than just manipulating it. So maybe I'm thinking the knuckle dusters have some sort of ice or fire to them, so he can manipulate both, say... He, like I said, presses the button and it activates um, ice in one of them. Like maybe the knuckle, the knuckle freezes over with ice or something if he presses it. Or if he presses the fire one, like flames are set at the tips of each of the knuckles, so he can manipulate that fire and increase it or do whatever with it. Because um, I gotta, I forgot to take into consideration that. Conjuring for kinetics is a lot. Knuckle dusters, those are brass knuckles. I call them knuckle dusters because they're probably not going to be made of brass. I, just, I like to call them knuckles or knuckle dusters because any person I give them to, they're probably not going to be made out of brass. <laughs> I didn't give them a bio yet. That normally always comes last when creating characters for me. Unless I already have the bio in mind when creating somebody. Where does eye power come from? The eye just increases pretty much everything to do with this virtue. And it also grants the hallucination stuff. So you can make somebody hallucinate. Uh, so he already pretty much has street speed and strength with his normal abilities. So giving him something like gloves that give him super strength wouldn't help or wouldn't be creative enough in my mind shield what do you do with the shield I just imagine him sending things out faster like if he had a slingshot, put a rock in a slingshot, and then boom, he'd shockwave and send that rock out faster. Um, light shield. Excuse me, Roka. This is Windmill's weapon. Debris. Bladed spinning disc. I don't see the main character something like that. Plus that's pretty similar to shield. Spiked whip. Uh, that'd be pretty similar to Ferris's chain, so I probably wouldn't do something like that. 
and I don't want to give him a sword because every freaking protagonist ever has a sword. If they're if they have a weapon, it's gonna be a sword. So I'm definitely not giving him a sword. Knife, dagger. That's for the more sneaky types. I don't see him being that type. Maybe a hammer. What would the hammer do? So if he uses the hammer, that hammer could be stronger than if he weren't using his fist. That could be something as part of the hammer. I have to figure out what the hammer is made of in order to take shockwave things like that. Like he could send the shockwave through the hammer. It would be something. Let's write that down. I normally see hammers for like, um, for like sturdy, big, bigger types of characters, because you know hammers can be heavy and that type of thing. But if he has like a small, like a smaller hammer, like Mjolnir, like Thor's hammer, um, I can see him wrecking shop with that. That might be interesting. Not something I thought of. I was normally just thinking, I'm probably going to end up giving him a sword, but I don't think that's going to be the case. Since we have hammers. Staff, that might be something. That's not very, um, not action-oriented, but strength-wise, I don't see how that would help him a whole lot. A spear, I don't want to give him a spear. I don't think any of them need Maybe like one of the main characters will have a spear, but it won't be one of the main four. Uh, cleavers, whips, hatchets, fans. You could probably do something with fans, but I'm not going to give them fans. I think we're going to go with hammer. But I need the hammer to be able to do something else. As long as I have the base tool in mind, I think I can build off of that. Like, for example... Ferris, I already knew I was going to give him chains as his weapon, but I wasn't sure what the chains were going to do, but I just built off of the idea of him having chains and what chains can do, and then also thinking about magnetism and the whole metal part of his abilities, so that's why I came up with those abilities for his chains, so I'm going to have to take some time to work through what the hammer, what else the hammer can do besides just have shockwaves sent through it and increase its smashing power. Yep, sort of overused. Yep, I agree. Um, Cloud from Final Fantasy with that giant oversized sword. I think Asta from uh, Black Clover, he has a sword. Uh, Bleach, Ichigo has a sword. Uh, I'm surprised Goku from Dragon Ball Z doesn't have a sword. Uh, my hero... Nope, they don't really carry weapons, unless it's a part of their quirk. Like Stain. Stain's, Stain had a reason to have his sword. So he could cut people, and then lick their blood, and then that paralyzed them. Uh, okay. We can, move, we can move on here. Uh, living armor, that's going to take some time to work out. I know she can, with her living armor, she can craft all sorts of weapons already, so whatever she gets cannot be some, has to be something she cannot craft with that living goop that she, uh, that she kind of creates. Um, so I just thought while looking at the list of tools, mask, a mask might be something Grace can use. So Grace, she used to be a, um, when this was, back when this was the Disturbed Delinquent series, and she, it was about aliens as well, she was one of the alien races of, of the Deadheads, which are just aliens that have skulls showing, and then those skulls are also happen to be on fire. Um, and in that series, she was always supposed to be wearing a helmet at all times, not because, um, 
you know, not because she thought she was ugly or anything, even though she was straight up skull on fire. Um, because why would she? Well, all of the deadheads would kind of wear something that would cover their skull. Plus, she'd look weird kind of walking around being the only flaming skull person on the planet. So, um, she was going to wear something like a motorcycle helmet or something like that. But I'm giving her a mask in this series, and she's no longer going to be a... Uh, I might change her name as well. She's no longer going to be a deadhead, obviously, because this is set in a different world. Since deadheads are not given names, the Olympus gave named her after her ace weapon aim. Uh, her ace weapon aim and grace with all weapons she wields. Uh, ooh, let's get rid of that. We're probably gonna rename her. Because grace was so fitting for the character that this was before. I still might end up using Grace. Actually, I don't see why I can't give Meet Grace a character within the Descended series still, because Black Jackal still has his older sister, who was also a deadhead, and Black Jackal was also a deadhead. But Grace was supposed to be his younger sister that was part of this series, it was part of the Disturbed Lincoln series. So, um. Yeah, let me add Grace to Beyond. That's probably where I'm going to stick her. Beyond is not... Oh, this is not the right document. Whoops. Beyond is not finished, and I'm still adding characters to Beyond. There's, I'm only on, like, chapter 3 or 4, I think. Um, let me see. Oh, we're already in the... Let's, oh, let's go to this new document. Version. Search Beyond. what we need to do is copy this first. See, I want to put our above clutter. Space wall. Actually, I'm going to put her under viral. No, you can't see what I'm doing. I'm about to... Hang on. Female. Alien race. Race. So this character is going to be completely different. The grace from Descendant is probably not going to have auditory teleportation, though. I want to keep that to um, that for this series. So, 
I just made two characters from one character. Uh, oh, let me also add race. Always. So, mask. The mask is going to be this person's tool. I don't know exactly what it's going to do, but it's obviously going to have something to do with their auditory teleportation. It's got to grant them something else. Um, I could also give them like a close range weapon, um, but the weapon would have to do something. Um, so she, she has like, I can see her having knives or daggers or a knife or a dagger um, to help her with the teleportation yeah I could see her using something like that so say she threw a knife and it made a tink sound against a wall on the opposite side of the a corridor or something like that and then she could teleport to that and then pick up her knife and keep moving um, might have to do that she might just wear a mask like normally just as a person so the mask doesn't have to be your tool should it be one knife well two knife normally I have characters with that have knives wielding two so I'm gonna give her one the knife's gotta be special though it's gotta be extra special if there aren't two of them. I didn't specify what type of mask she's going to be wearing, but uh, a little hammer that's all right. Looking blood reminds me of Hannibal. Well, anything about tasting somebody else should remind you of Hannibal. Lemon, pepper, and lungs. Yeah. Chicken. What about buffalo? Buffalo sauce lungs. What if they were made like, like boneless chicken or something? Boneless, boneless chicken wings. Boneless, uh, bonuses. I'm probably going to end up I might change Omnispec's name. Because he's kind of the only one right now that has a code name. I'm not sure I'm the biggest fan of that. Not sure I'm the biggest fan of that right now. Uh, and I don't have a creative enough weapon for her right now. Cell manipulation. Her power can be actually really overpowered. Keep scrolling. I'm not going to focus on the villains right now. Mark the listers. I had a backstory in mind for him. Maybe one duster. Some more ideas. Clad. So now I imagine a lad like Clad would have uh, would have a hammer. Like this, this man's. Oh, he's not. He's not a stellar anymore. Oh, that alien race I made for this 
series. I'm not a. You don't want no spicy buffalo lungs. So Cloud's power, he has subdermal, subdermal armor, which grants him all of this stuff here. Um, like I said, I imagine him having a hammer. But I don't know if I want Sarah uh, to have a hammer because uh, a couple characters like Debris already has a hammer as his, as his weapon, their weapon. Is Debris supposed to be female? I forgot. I think Debris was supposed to be male, but I might make him female. Um, hmm. I, I kind of like the idea of a hammer for Ciro, but I don't know if that's protagonist-worthy. I, like I said, I know Thor, his main whole shtick is a hammer. But I don't see him being, like, he's kind of naive, and maybe he should get something fun-loving, naive, but really good at what he does so he should get something that represents that or is along the lines of that maybe not a hammer a lad like that not sure you don't no no buffalo loans all right they're not for everybody uh all right i know i keep saying uh all right it, it's just Pretty much thinking time, and I needed to stream. Needed to stream. I didn't really add anything to the document. Gauntlets. I could see him wearing gloves, gauntlets, or like a ring or rings of some sort. But I don't know what they do. Because he's already strong without his weapon. Because he has the added bonus, added unfair bonus of his virtuous eyes. Um, but that's like the best thing I think I could think to give him. Maybe the gauntlets or gloves would store something. Maybe they could store something. That's what I've been seeing him have as like his weapon or tool made by the blacksmith, like a glove or gauntlet, but I was trying to stray away from that and give him something else. I don't know why. I just didn't see it as creative enough, but I, if I can give it a creative enough thing, that's fine. So, the gloves would have to... Gloves, gauntlets, maybe rings. I don't see what the rings will do, but that store power. What would he normally be doing, or something over the course of a fight where he could get the gloves to build up, or something like that? Maybe every time he swings a punch, it stores power for the next time he uses his solar time, the shockwave generation. No, that's pretty similar to uh, what somebody else does from a different series. I don't think, I don't want that it stores power. I'm gonna have to think on it. I'm gonna have to probably sleep on it. But uh, I apologize. This uh, stream wasn't that eventful. Other than the reading at the beginning, uh, I think we're just gonna cut it. Well, three minutes, but I think we're just gonna cut it short because um, yeah, I, I, this is the type of thing I, I kind of just need to think out. So.
Uh, we're going to cut the stream short. Y'all already know the plugs. So we're going to get out of here. Uh, I might as well do the plug anyway. But. All right, paperback for the send book. If you like the reading from the beginning, paperback, $20. Kindle Unlimited, free 99 minus 99. Kindle Digital, Kindle Digital, ten dollars. Should give it a rating and review, and I shout you out to these lovely people down here. Uh, if you want to read the first five chapters free, it's available on Wattpad.com, ScribbleHub.com. We got Patreon, that's available. Patreon, Patreon. We got a donation link in the chat as well. Oh no, oh no, that's what I want. Okay, donation link in the chat. Got to catch that in the chat. Uh. And yeah, if you're watching on YouTube, consider subscribing. I went from 1,010 subscribers to exactly 1,000 subscribers. And next time I upload a a video, I really hope I either go up in subscribers. I, I just hope I stay at at least a thousand because it'd be disappointing to go back under. But thank you guys so much for watching. And this is J-Base Phoenix once again.